In a division problem, the dividend tells us how much we have and the divisor tells us how we group it. How can we determine which numbers can be divided by 12 without any remainders? Well, if a number is divisible by 12, that means it's also divisible by 3 and 4. This means we need to know the divisibility rules for 3 and 4. If a number is divisible by 3, that means the sum of its digits is divisible by 3. And if a number is divisible by 4, then the last two digits of that number are also divisible by 4. Well, let's test this out. Here we have a dividend of 24 that we want to divide by a divisor of 12. That means we need to put 24 items into each group with nothing left over and no remainders. So we go through, we can see that as we separate our 24 items into 12 groups, we can do so by putting the same number of items in each group. 24 divided by 12 gives us two. Now let's test that with our divisibility rules. If 24 is divisible by three, then that means the sum of its digits is divisible by three. 2 plus 4 is 6, and 6 is divisible by 3. It should also be divisible by 4. Well, 24 only has two numbers in its digits, so we just have to check 24. 24 is divisible by 4. So since it's divisible by 3 and 4, we can see that 24 is also divisible by 12, and it follows our rule. Let's test out another example. Here we have 16 divided by 12. If 16 is divisible by 12, that means I should be able to put the same number of items in each group without having any leftovers or any remainders. But as we can see, when we start to divide 16 by 12, I can put one item in each group and then have four items remaining. So 16 divided by 12 is one remainder four. If we test that with our rules, we can check to see if 16 is divisible by three and divisible by four. Well, for being divisible by three, I would need to add together the one and the six. One plus six is seven. Seven is not divisible by three. On the other hand, 16, checking the last two digits of just one and six, 16 is divisible by four. But since it's not divisible by three and by four, then 16 is not divisible by 12. We can use this to test to see if larger numbers will also be divisible by 12. Here we have 144 divided by 12. Let's start by testing to see if 144 is going to be divisible by four. To do that, we check to see if the last two digits are divisible by four. So we have 44 divided by four, which gives us 11. So that checks out. Next, we check to see if it's divisible by three. If it's divisible by three, then the sum of its digits will be divisible by three. So one plus four is five, five plus four is nine. When we check, nine divided by three gives me three. So this tells me 144 is divisible by both four and by three, so I should be able to divide it by 12 with no remainders. 12 goes into 14 once, subtract my 12. 14 minus 12 is two, bring down my four. 12 goes into 24 twice, and sure enough, when we subtract that out, I have nothing left over. So 144 divided by 12 gives me exactly 12. Let's test this on our other example. 234 divided by 12. Let's start by checking to see if it's divisible by four. If so, my last two digits will be divisible by four. 34 divided by four gives me eight, remainder two. So that tells me 234 is not going to be divisible by four. Next, let's check to see if it's going to be divisible by three. I'll add together the digits. Two plus three is five, five plus four is nine. Nine we know is going to be divisible by three. It gives me exactly three. So here we have not divisible by four, but it is divisible by three. Since it's not divisible by both, it should not be divisible by 12 without a remainder. Let's test it out. 12 goes into 23 one subtract 12. 23 minus 12 leaves me with 11, bring down my four. 12 goes into 114 nine times minus 108, and that leaves me with six. So sure enough, since it was not divisible by three and four, we weren't able to divide by 12 without getting a remainder.